Welcome to Soundbridge Music's Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know front range artists who not only shaped the local music scene, but who joined with Soundbridge Music in its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring communities together. We're so happy to be here today with Scott Ramser, the Soundbridge Music Featured Artist for October 2018. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen and heard Scott playing at one of the many venues along the Front Range. He's become well known for his soaring vocal performances and ability to ramps her up some well-known songs, taking them from ordinary to extraordinary with a voice you'll never forget. Scott has been kind enough to take some time out of his day to talk to us about his music, his inspiration, and the exciting things he has planned for the future. Well, howdy, everybody. We are here at 300 Sons Brewing, and Scott Ramster has been kind enough to sit down with us and answer some of our questions. How are you doing, Scott? Thanks for having me, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Our pleasure. So uh, you've had a really interesting path that has got you to this place. Um, how does the owner of a karate studio and a full-time teacher get so deeply invested in the music scene? Wow. Well, I just kind of came out of retirement a couple of years ago. You know, family, kids, uh, career, and you kind of sacrifice some of the things that you love, sacrifice some of the things that you enjoy to make sure that uh, the kids get to soccer. And mom has a good time and everybody's balanced. And uh, I got to a point where I was just like, man, went out and I basically saw one of your shows. And then I saw one of Andy's shows, yeah. Andy Epler. And then I saw a couple of other people, Bonnie and Taylor, yeah. Sims. And I was just like, man, I miss doing that. And I just decided to come to one of the open mics. And I think the first thing that I did was uh, Andy Epler's mm -hmm. over there when they were at Sky Brewing. And he's at uh, Grossenbar now, just going strong. And, uh, and then uh, we came to 300 Sons and started getting to know you a little bit. And you guys encouraged me and uh, just kind of took off from there. It was nice. I feel grateful. Ah, beautiful. Well, it's so good to have you as a part of this music community. And uh, that's one thing that that uh, that you've given back a lot, I think, is that encouragement. Um, as You know, you've, you've built yourself up in this community. And now you're always one of the first people who uh, who's there to, to kind of be a... Be a, uh, supporting, a supporting voice. Uh, so what do you think kind of lies behind your tendency and focus on, on being supportive of, of so many other artists? You know, I, I just remember how good it felt, you know. You get those things, and they say that is, you know, just giving. Uh, is, if you want to get something, you got to give first. And it just, the way I was treated by the local community and the Left Hand Artist Group and, you know, everybody that I've mentioned already, plus countless others, that was just it. It made me feel so good. I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that everybody gets their, their shout. And uh, so it's just, it means a lot to me because I respect the local music community. I think that, that there's a, so much talent here, and uh, I just want everybody to hear it. So as much as I can do to, to get it out there, that's what I want to do. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit now about your creative process. What inspiration lies behind your music, and uh, and uh, what does it look like when you're when you're writing? whole family is from the south. I'm from Atlanta. I was born on the coast in Brunswick and uh, just I have a lot of roots, southern roots, and there's a lot of southern flavor to what I do. Uh, so probably a little bluegrassy, but I also have a really strong kind of indie bone, you know, that uh, has been uh, pretty prevalent in my music for a long time. And so I guess just kind of a mesh of all that kind of stuff and what I listen to locally. And uh, the, the process is uh, I, I really like listening to other artists and not just like you know, not Peter Gabriel kind of like mainstream I like to listen to a lot of the guys who are just kind of up and coming and who are doing the local music scene I get a lot of inspiration from what we produce here locally and uh, it's just been fantastic the local bluegrass scene is amazing Eric Wiggs and uh, Taylor Sims and Bonnie Sims and all the guys down in Lyons, Casey, uh, and just amazing people. So I got in there and started to learn about that genre because I'd never really played it before. And uh, the last two years has been an incredible journey. Got to learn how to play the banjo and the mandolin and have started composing on those two instruments. And uh, that, that flavor kind of leaks in every now and then. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing right now, and it's it's really paying off, I think. Oh yeah, it's it's working. So, well, what what do you hope people come away with after hearing one of your songs, or or what do you what do you want them to be feeling when they're when they're leaving a venue you just played at? Boy, I just 
I like people to be happy. I like people smiling, and uh, you're you're one of the happiest composers I know. <laughs> so I, so you're you're a real hero of mine. But I like people to to think and to feel good, and you know maybe access some of those those things in their lives that make them feel a little bit better. And uh, if I have a sad song, I, I need them to feel sorry for me and realize what a good position they're in compared to compared to where I am. So. What? Let's shift back to community here. What kind of inspired you to uh, become a part of Soundbridge music? Um, well, I know the people behind Soundbridge. Who are they? Trish and Wes. Uh, Trish Applegate and Lotes and uh, Mr. Wes. And uh, they are, they're just, they're encouraging too. They're another a soul uh, pair that really care about the music in the community. And I watched a couple of artists that they backed. And I was surprised and honored to have these guys call me up and make me a part of it. So. Uh, it's it's good work. It's it's encouraging people who are right on the edge, I think, of just kind of kind of breaking it out and uh, and voices that need to be heard, you know. And again, I'm very humbled to be a part of it. But uh, they've got some good ears at Soundbridge. They know, you know, who's really doing it right and who's really got something to say. And uh, and I like that. I'm drawn to that. I'm drawn to the storytelling and I'm drawn to the composing and the writing and and the strength of that. Well, I think I think you're right. One of them, right in the hey, in the thick of it. You're, that's awesome. You're in the right place, buddy. <laughs> so, what are you working on? What are you working on these days? Death metal. Death metal. Death you heard metal. it here first. Death metal mandolin. <laughs> I think is going to be a good thing. Uh, oh. No, I've uh, I've kind of come back around from a lot of mandolin and, and banjo writing that I did last year with a lot of my bluegrass buddies, and kind of tried to come back and, and get the guitar out again and really try to do that. And, uh, I, a lot of good stuff's come out of it lately, and I'm starting to currently kind of lean towards maybe picking my, uh, my uh, electric guitar back up. So uh, if, if people want to check out your music, where's a, where a good place for them to, to do that? You know, I'm, I'm like 75 years old, and so all I have is You're a Facebook 75. account. 75. 69. Uh, no, I, I have a Facebook <laughs> account called Scott Ramser Music, and uh, I'm, you know, getting, I'm getting on the Twitter, and I'm getting on the, on the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're gonna help me get a YouTube thing up and running. Absolutely. This was not, this was not ever about promoting me. This was not ever about getting out here and doing uh, Scott Ramsey music or anything. It's the only reason I have that is because my daughter created it and said I'm gonna put a bunch of stuff that we recorded, you know, on there. And then, then a lot of people awesome. have seen that. And they've asked me to do some different things, which has been nice, but. Uh, you know, lately I'd really like to explore, because I've gotten to meet such incredible people. I've gotten to meet so many people who are just such creative forces and such talented musicians, that now I have access to like another group of friends who can help me kind of do things on the next level. And a lot of them have offered, and so I'm really excited to kind of live that life and try to maybe take it up from just occasionally going out and singing with friends to, you know, doing more shows and to, to really getting maybe a, a band together and just uh, developing a sound, you know, because uh, like I said, I'm 94. He's and, 90. Uh, I'm 94 years old and I'm not getting any younger. He's aged 19 years in this interview. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, well is there anything else you'd like to share? Anything uh, you'd like your fans to know? I would like anybody and everybody who's able to get involved in this local music scene, whatever you can. Now, Soundbridge is a great way to, to, to do it. Support it. Go online. You know, find out about it. Uh, submit your material. You know, talk to Trish and, and Wes. There are lots of open mics. Uh, there are every show around. Super music enthusiasts. But um, I mean, the most important thing is just get out and play. I mean, if you're like a dad who's not been doing anything for like years and you used to play in the garage or if you've always written in your basement but you've never put it out there you know if you've never been to an open mic if you've never done any of that stuff there's so many people that I hear and you're like what who is that you know just amazing talent and musicians that it, it only gets better if you share it you know encourage your friends who kind of sing encourage your friends who kind of play uh, encourage your friends that you hear singing and they don't think anybody's listening to them you know to, to get out and, and into the open mic community and to do it and to just at, at local at your friends patio I mean whatever you got to do but just share it because you only get better by playing with other people and you only grow by sharing what you've got and I love just what's happening here 
and I've been so fortunate and grateful that somebody has put their arm around me and said, hey, they gotta just, you know, why don't you go do that thing, you know, go do that show, go do that open mic. Oh, ah, well, thank you so much, Scott, for sitting down with us. You're welcome. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so um, much. Thanks to 300 Sons Brewing for having us here. Cheers. For these. Cheers. If you'd like to hear some of Scott's music, check out a couple of the videos that he recorded as the Soundbridge Music Featured Artist. Thank you very much for watching, and be sure to check back in November for our next Featured Artist of the Month, Valerie Bott. If you're interested in learning more about Soundbridge Music and becoming a part of Music for Change, check us out at soundbridgemusic.org. Lightning strike me down so I can't rise up once again. And break that empty silence Let my troubles all be carried Off upon me